I have a friend. Her name is Felicia, and we have known each other for two years now, or three to be exact. The first year, we said nothing more than hello, smiling when passing by. My smile was forced. Her presence was something new and unknown. That first year passed. Uh, me and my son, Sid, who was five years at the time, went to Liljeholmen, um, one metro station from where we live, just outside Stockholm, Sweden. Liljeholmen is a place dominated by a square and a large shopping mall. We went there to buy something, I, I don't remember what. And there she sat, just outside the metro. Uh, Sid's eyes caught uh, the sparkling treasure at the bottom of her paper cup and took it and said, I want it. This embarrassed me a lot, so I told him to give it back immediately because she's very poor. She got it back, made a sign for us to wait, and picked up a coin and gave it to Sid. Ice cream, she said. Right there, she shook me completely. Um, that small gesture was so consequential, that coin so precious. It was as if she turned the light on, and in that light, I saw her as what she is, a human being. She could have been me. Of course, I knew that before. I knew that she was human, um, but now I felt it. It took a coin to make the penny drop. Me and Sid went for some ice cream. He ate happily. I was still shaken. Immense compassion was swelling in me, um, kept me awake the following night, asking a thousand questions. Who was she? Where did she come from? And where was she here? Where did she sleep tonight? The night was cold. I cried. I worried. What if she was gone the next day? What if I'd lose her now? Next day came, and there she sat, on the same spot. She held an empty packet of medicine and pointed at her kidneys. She was in pain. So I took her to the clinic that was just around the corner. Uh, and got my first lesson on how hard it can be to get medical help as a migrant. This clinic is where I go when needed. The nurses and doctors, they used to be so kind to me, but now it was completely different. She showed them her ID card. Her name, Felicia, born in 1984. They became almost aggressive, looking at us with the distrust and disgust. Um, told us that she could get no help there, but I didn't surrender. Then they said that it would cost over a thousand crowns. That's about $115, money none of us had. She got no help. Instead, I went to the pharmacy for painkillers and bought a warm blanket at a second-hand store. And I gave her my telephone number so she could call me in case she got worse. The next day, she was a lot better. It felt strange to stand up beside her while she was sitting. Could I sit too? 
I had never before seen anyone do like that. Um, but now it was my turn to do the opposite. So I decided to sit down. Um, it was like 10,000 feet to the ground. Time stood still. I sat down beside her and she put her blanket over my legs so we were both under it. The warmth I felt in that moment, her gentle eyes. Then I looked up. They were the people of my kind. There were no kindness in their eyes. And they looked at me as if I was uh, out of my mind or, and or very, very dirty. Uh, I saw them, the people of my kind, from her per perspective. It was a new world revealed, a world she knew too well. There on the ground we started talking, even though we didn't know each other's languages with some Spanish, Italian, French, Romanian and Swedish words, gestures and sounds, and later with Google Translate. We started to create our own special language, Sopa Limba it's called, language soup. The more Felicia told me, the more I wanted to know. I thought that uh, no, the more I wanted to tell her story. <laughs> uh, I thought that if uh, those who read my words would feel just a little bit of the compassion and friendship I felt, something would change for the better. Not only for Felicia, but also for the others in her situation. They live in my country, but they live in a parallel world in pieces of woodland between motorways, in parks, and on sidewalks. They freeze and they ache. There's sheds and tents occasionally set on fire. They live in the deepest poverty. The more she told me, the more I wanted to know. But, we, but it was hard. Uh, our communication was primitive. We needed an imp interpreter. Luckily, Arena come to, came to our rescue. Uh, Arena and I had been acquaintances for a long time. Uh, she came across my writings about Felicia and contacted me. Uh, Arena is now uh, a good friend and uh, her and me and Felicia have been sitting talking for hours and days, laughing and crying to get the story of Felicia's life, getting closer and closer to each other. The first time Irina and me uh, went to Felicia's home country was on December the 1st, 2013, less than two months from the occurrence with the coin. Uh, we landed on, uh, on the national uh, holiday. Music and dancing on the airport, flags everywhere. This was uh, a, <laughs> a to totally unknown country to me while Arena was born here. Felicia's husband and, and um, his brother picked us up at the airport and drove to the village. It was dark outside now, the starry sky. The road grew smaller and smaller from asphalt to mud. And in the darkness at the end of the road it was. The little house they have built for themselves of uh, wood and clay. Dogs bark barking and roosters crowing. And there she was, Felicia, greeting us in her own house. 
The one room uh, was hot like a sauna. Uh, she had... Uh, um, uh, had a fire hold the whole day to, to make it warm. Uh, and she had uh, made delicious food. Our hearts were filled with joy. Her daughter was the sweetest one. I felt completely safe here. The next morning, we woke up to see the surroundings in daylight. The poor outskirts of the village the woods and the mountains, the little house. If we don't go abroad, nothing happens, Felicia's husband said. Then we are stuck in this poverty. We have no jobs here. Um, we go abroad to give our, our daughter a better future. Felicia and her husband uh, goes to Sweden on a regular basis, stays a couple of months to earn money, while their daughter lives with her grandmother and goes to school. That's the most important of all, Felicia says, that her daughter goes to school so she can get a job and a beautiful life in the future. Me and Irina went back to Sweden and soon Felicia did the same to take her usual place just outside the metro station. I continued my writing, and soon the media discovered us. Felicia and me could be seen on TV, heard on radio, and read about in newspapers and magazine, magazines. Our friendship was rare. It's not anything I would recommend to become friends under media supervision. It's quite bizarre. <laughs> but that's where we are now, Felicia and me. Uh, our friendship has taught me so much. It's gotten me closer to my better self, made me challenge my fears. Felicia herself just want to live a simple life. And she's sick and tired of, uh, of interviews and lectures. So I continue speaking by myself, speaking for us both. I speak to you now, and I hope you hear me with your hearts and ears. I have a friend. Her name is Felicia, and we could have been you. <laughs>